many of them Republicans. We need a narrative how we deal with that. Because if people say, I'll never talk to them, I won't do that. But sadly, they're making decisions in fact as the end of the week. They're making decisions to do with education and with culture. So we have to learn to be political. I believe the new battleground is politics. The IRA didn't defeat us. We looked down the barrel of a gun for 35 years and they still did murders in the United Ireland. But what I fear, if we operate the political process, we're going to hand the battle over to them. We're going to let them win the peace war. And I believe we have the talent within our communities. We have the abilities to take them all right across the board. We're not always going to agree on the union side of things, how to do that. That's pretty obvious. But I think it's important that we take them on in the new battlefield of politics. And how do we get our people to vote and get involved? Well, give them a reason to vote. I think the flag issue brought that out very clearly. I think you'll see an increase in the vote because of the flag issue. People seen that they didn't vote in Belfast, but what happened? We got a nationalist majority and it took down the flag from the city hall. Now, that was symbolic that we can win that later on about that. But I do think we have to give our people a reason to vote. We have to say it makes a difference. Your vote will make a difference as to what ministries we take over in the executive. Your vote will make a difference in the city hall when they come to decisions about our culture. So I think it's important that we share with people uh, what, what politics is about. We educate people. Yes, we educate our young people, everybody else. And politics does have a bad name. I'm maybe not the only one, but certainly one on the panel, I'm not a member of any political party. Uh, but I do vote every time, and I do vote unionist. But I think we need to, to tell our young people and share with them other people that it does make a difference to go out there in the vote and they need to do that uh, on every issue. Politics does have a bad name. You know, there was a whole expenses scandal with Westminster. Every time that politician comes to one or somebody's asking a freedom of information question, what's the that cost? I have to say, I don't buy into that. I say we elect people to do a job. If we don't do that job, we vote them out the next time. I think we'll have to trust our politicians. And I don't care who they are, whether it's Peter Robinson, whether it's Mike Nesbitt, uh, Jim Allister or Billy Hutchins, whatever. You know, I believe they all work hard. I might mean, agree with them all uh, on certain things, but they all work hard. And we have to go with this mantra because it's spread like a disease in East Belfast. All our politicians are rubbish, they do nothing for us. Yes, there are some wasters out there, but there's some wasters in every profession. There's wasters here ministers, there's wasters wherever you work. Uh, and yes, they need change. You change them electorally, but I believe we are served by politicians who work hard. What we have to do is make sure they work hard at the right things. Thank you, sir. I thought ministers were our political system. I thought ministers were our political system. It's going up in London, I forget his name. We have, a, we have our, our final panelists. Henry, one of the things I think has happened over the, the last 20, 30 years is members of what we call Protestant middle class seem to become very detached in the sense of they're not really turned on by religious and they may have you know, mixed marriages, they may be, you know, have a preference that there's not a United Ireland but are, it's not the right entity anymore, unionism is not the right entity. Do you think that's part of the process of yeah. why some people have turned away from the United Ireland? Well, <clears throat> firstly, uh, Chairman, thank you very much indeed for your kind invitation down to Lisburn. Um, it's an honour to be here with such a esteemed representative. Uh, in, in the area where I live, it's, um, we have 30 councillors in the area of district council, and we've got five unionists. Now, in the area that I represent, which is the Moors, which Geoffrey Donaldson knows very well, we would have up to 70% unionist county. In the, in the wards that make up the Moors area, there's five of them. And you would always find that the unionist community would come out and vote um, strongly. Whereas nationalism seems to be, they, they're not as motivated to vote. And clearly it's because Sinn Féin control our council. They think that they're not served by malignant republicanism and uh, constitutional nationalism through the SDLP. But the people who are left, the 20% the, the of the community in the early morning, they will come out and vote for their representatives. And it was, I found it astonishing whenever I looked at North Lisburn. And if you go to the Warren um, estate, uh, uh, Lisburn North Ward, I think it is, the, the percentages are down as low as 30% down. So clearly, it's a, a feeling, as Mike Nesbitt said, people are content. If people are content 
and feel confident you'll not bother voting because they think it's not really of interest to me, things are going okay, I'm not going to vote. Whereas now in our patch in Uri and Warren, where Protestants feel under intense pressure, they will still come out and vote. But um, all politics is local. And part of the big fear that I have is the reorganization of local councils. Because one of the things that keeps uh, people interested in politics is having councillors that you can go and talk to, that you can bring your problems to. In England, in Wales, in the Irish Republic, you still have parish councils, you still have urban councils, you still have rural councils. And then you have district and county council. Now, people may say that's the plethora of um, democratic institutions that people can have access to, but it's actually good because it does still keep motivation and it keeps people interested in the, the works of their local areas. And you'll find in many English towns and villages they don't have the same problems with vandalism and graffiti or whatever because they've got that local accountability and that local access. Now, within Northern Ireland, we have 26 councils that people already, already feel alienated from. So what's it going to be like whenever we go down to a letter? Not only will the number of councillors drop, any guy who has an independent mind and wants to get involved in politics, it's going to be virtually impossible for them because the quotas are going to be so massive. The only two parties that will gain will be the DUP and Sinn Féin in terms of uh, the two biggest parties being able to maximise their vote and, and vote manage. So I think that's bad. And if you even go to Scotland where they have their unitary councils, now I'm sticking to the question, Chairman, if that's okay, because I was asked, how do you politicise people? In Scotland where you've got unitary uh, local authorities, like we will have, you still have community councils. Now those community councils still have um, access to planning and local people can go in and discuss their concerns. What are we going to have with the 11 super councils? We're going to have more professional politicians and more noses in the truck. And I, I, I'll not name names or criticize any individual party, but I see it. I see people who are strong unionists. who get up to the council and maybe someone on the committee coming up with a few pounds on it. They're no longer strong unionists. That's what you're up against. So you have to pick your people. You have to pick your people well. And political motivation is so important because if you go to Fermanagh and South Tyrone, Five votes was the difference between having a militant Republican and Michelle Gilbernew or having a United Unionist candidate there. Now five people, that's one car full of people. So if there had been a bit more political motivation uh, in Fermanagh South Tyrone, we would have had that seat. Instead of Michelle Gilbernew claiming £160,000 a year for doing absolutely nothing to fight our cause, if we had had that little bit more political motivation, we would have now held that seat with money to fight the unionist cause. So it's so important that people pick your candidates, make sure the person that you're voting for is the person who represents your views, regardless of party. Because the party label can be an abomination when it comes to uh, local politics. Because people will go down the party list and they'll vote one, two, three, four for their party. But the people that they're getting may not be the person who is best suited to your ward and to represent your views in your council. You need people who have, in local government, you need people who are absolutely and totally committed to deliver for you. If you don't have that, if you people are more interested, get in a place on a policing board, five grand a year, get in a place on some week, committee, two and a half, that's no good to you. Absolutely no good for nothing. Those people are no good. You need people who are going to go in there, be focused, be motivated to better your way of life, and I have to say, people call me Sinn Féin, in my council area, and I know in a lot of our council areas, they are generally like that for their people. They are generally like that. They would put many unions to shame. So, it's, the ball is in our court, but one thing I would say to you is, please lobby against this 11th council um, system, because it, it is going to create a number load of professional councillors, politicians, with their noses in the truck and voter attorney will go down, it won't go up because people will become more detached. Try and get systems like we do have on the mainland where people can actually be on the ground and influence rural communities. 
It, it will be hard to do because the DUP and Sinn Féin, I'm not getting at the DUP, but they are the two parties driving this forward. And in, in my area, border unionists are going to be terribly damaged. In, in the area where I live now, we have three unions. Now, three unions out of a council of 30 is a, is a big percentage. But under the new arrangements, which really do look like gerrymandering, unionist communities in the west and the south of Northern Ireland are going to lose a lot of council seats. We will go from three unionists to two, and possibly one, dependent on whether we go into the 100% nationalist area of one restrever one point, or into the 60% nationalist area of Newcastle. So the systems that we have mitigate against unionists doing well in the future. Unless we can change those, use our power of lobby to convince the DUP, this is bad for Northern Ireland PLC, it's bad for, in particular, um, isolated unionist communities, then we have to, then we won't progress as much as I want to. So the ball is still in your court. You still have the power. It's your vote that counts. So please try and make it work. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody like to put a hand up here? Okay, no. Sorry we call you male or female, but I can't actually see you very well because of the light, so I see a hand. Can, can, I, can I just say to the chairman, he, he said, I asked me about middle class people, and I'm sorry. I'm well, so I'm not not again. Because I'm actually, I'm actually working class, I'm still waiting to go and get Mike down to my house for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm uh, Alison McCracken from Lisburn. As younger, I just like to get my perspective of it. I think Jim Allister's absolutely hit the nail on the head, as you can show. But why would I go out the book with it's practically impossible to change the government. Um, the government says go out and change the government, but you can't because of the agreement which the DUP have signed up to, making us one of the most undemocratic countries in the rest of the world. Um, I would say to Mike this, but if you're really serious about being a great idea of this vote, why don't you walk away from the executive and pay that in opposition so we actually have some option when it comes to voting and leave the opposition in for the government and the parliament? Mike, do you want to create the opposition? Well, the reason we're not walking out at the moment is that there is no space called opposition. Uh, Fifteen years ago, when, when the deal was done, you have to remember that you know, there were people who, who wanted to go forward politically, there were people who thought the way forward was through terrorism, and then there were people who wanted to ride the two horses. And the objective in, in 98 was to bring everybody into the, the political process and to be inclusive. So the last thing that you wanted 15 years ago was to have an opposition. Uh, but now that the institutions are, are up and running, I think the next logical step towards normalizing politics, and we're a long way from having normal politics, would be to have an official opposition, and that would be our policy. Uh, but you would need the broad agreement of all the parties uh, at Stormont to get that, which isn't going to happen. Or uh, you would need uh, the London government, you'd need the parties of Westminster to have laid guts to impose it. What is available to us, would, uh, to any party, is to voluntarily withdraw from the executive. But if you did that, I believe you would currently, if you did it currently, you would be less strong uh, than you are being in, because what do you expect when you're not a party of the executive, i.e. you're an unofficial opposition? You expect speaking rights, you expect to be able to have days where you set the debates at storm. Do you expect to have facilities to be able to research alternatives in terms of policies on the economy, education, health and housing to those being brought forward by the executive? And none of those rights are currently available, but they are being discussed by the five leaders of the parties of the executive. And if, if we didn't reach a deal on those, uh, I never have and do not rule out the Ulster Unionist Party stepping away voluntarily 